Today we need to hear the call to be renewed, refreshed, relaunched in our life of faith. Our first lesson continues the saga that we've been hearing snippets out of over the last few weeks. The people of Israel have returned from exile in the Persian Empire, begun rebuilding Jerusalem, rebuilding the temple, reestablishing their regular worship. Now we come to a passage where an old book of the law, probably an early version of Leviticus, is found. They celebrate this. They have a big festival. They gather everyone, as the scripture says, who has understanding to hear the book of the law read, to reestablish their relationship, their covenant with God. Apparently, some receive this with some consternation, some concern, or maybe even fear, discovering the many customs that had fallen by the wayside during the generations of their exile. But again, the leaders encourage the people to take this as a time of celebration, a festival, a time to rejoice that they are now empowered to reestablish their relationship and their covenant with God. And we begin. In our letter from Paul today, we heard that beautiful metaphor of his about the Christian community, the body of the faithful, being like the human body. And every little part has its constituent place, its role to play, its vitality. Nothing is truly interchangeable. Nothing can be thrown out having no importance or value. Whoever we are, whatever our journey has been bringing us here, our ethnicity, our heritage, our education, our gender, our life experiences are all precious and important. God has a place for us in this community. None of us as members are disposable. In our gospel story, we have Jesus' new birth, his launching of a new life. Prior to this, he has left his life as a carpenter, been baptized by John the Baptist, gone off into the desert alone in a hermit kind of retreat, experienced temptation, triumphed over that, and now he comes back into the public world, launching that second part of his life, embracing his role as Messiah, prophet, rabbi, and of course, returns to his home where he grew up in Nazareth. And we'll see as the story goes on, doesn't get the best reception going back home. Luke picks very carefully the passage that he describes Jesus reading from the prophet Isaiah, because this sets the tone for the rest of the way he will unfold Jesus' story and tell the tales. For the poor have good news announced to them. Those imprisoned unjustly free, the handicapped, the outcast, those who are second and third rate in the society of the day will get very focused attention from Jesus and his ministry as the story unfolds. Again, no one is disposable in the realm of God. Everyone is important. And Luke goes to great pains to emphasize that Jesus takes God's kingdom to the most outcast, the most abandoned, those of least significance. No one gets left out. Luke draws on many different sources as he tells his story. Um, he most certainly had Mark's gospel with him because he retells some of the exact same stories almost exactly the same way. There's a source of quotations that he and Matthew probably both knew about and drew from because those things appear in both Gospels also. 
But Luke also has some unique material that is his own, that is probably from that local community that he grew up in and he knew that were not as widely told stories as some of the others. So we have a collection of, of, of uh, a broad range of material that he brings together to tell the story of Jesus, to tell the story of why this preacher in a backwater corner of the Roman Empire is important for the world. One of the things that underlines this message of Luke and demonstrates that he's probably writing to a Gentile, Roman, and Greek audience is that he never uses any Semitic or Hebrew or Aramaic words. It's all Greek. What's important, I really believe, for you and I today is to take a moment and think back to the different passages in our lives the transitions, the transformations, the relaunching of ourselves that we've gone through. And it's really rather significant. All of us grew up, went through grade school, some of us have been into high school, some went to trade school, some to college, some into the military. Many of us have married, and children are raising or have raised families. Every phase of our lives is another transition, another transformation, another birth, a new launch into a new adventure called forth and graced by God who gave his life. Today we see Jesus in that mode, relaunching himself embracing his mission and carrying it forward. No longer the carpenter in Nazareth. Now the Messiah, the creature. Today is a beautiful day for us to take a moment with the creed we will share just momentarily and with communion we will share again a little bit more and relaunch and rededicate and reaffirm ourselves as believers as disciples of Jesus, as followers of that way that he gave an example to and taught. My brothers and sisters, today, let's take the opportunity to rededicate